Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today we are going to find the slope of a line. We're going to do this in a couple of different ways. One of the ways can be done by using a graph or a table. Now what is slope? Well, as it says here, slope is a rate of change which can be positive, which is slanting upward, or negative, which is slanting downward. And one thing you will hear over and over again with slope is slope equals rise over run. Now our rise is our vertical change, our up and down change, and our run is our horizontal change, our left to right change. So in our first question here, we are being asked, a hiking trail rises 6 feet for every horizontal change of 100 feet. What is the slope of the hiking trail? If we look at slope being rise over run, what was our vertical rise? Well, six feet over our horizontal change of 100 feet. Now, slope is something that we can simplify. So if we divide by two on top and bottom here, we would get a slope of three over 50. The slope of the hiking trail is 3 fiftieths. Now we can also find the slope using a graph. Again, slope is going to be rise over run. And so when we look at our two points, they are illustrated right there and right there. Slope is going to equal our amount of rise divided by our amount of run. So as we count, when we start here, this is actually counting at zero. So this is zero, one, two, three. So our rise here is three. And when we look for our run, again, we're going to start right here, and that's going to be zero, one, two, three, four. So that there is 4. And again, slope equals the amount of rise over run. So our slope is going to equal our rise was 3 and our run was 4. So 3 fourths is our answer. We can also use a table. When using a table, it is important to recognize that our y coordinates deal with our rise, whereas our x coordinates deal with our run. You think about it, the up and down is the y. The left to right is your x, so that's not going to change with these. Now, rise over run is a good way of looking at slope. But another way of looking at slope is your change in y divided by your change in x. So when we look for the change in y, we are going to go from here to here as we calculate, so negative 1 minus a negative 2 would represent our change there, divided by, again, same direction, negative 2 minus a negative 6. Now, 1 minus negative 2 is the same thing as negative 1 plus 2, which is 1 over negative 2 minus negative 6 is the same thing as negative 2 plus 6, which is 4. So my change here is 1 fourth. Now the neat thing is it should work for any of the points that you choose. Let's say you go from 6 to 2 here. Well, you could do 6 minus 2 on the bottom, 1 minus 0 on the top, and you would again get one fourth. So this change, this slope, 
should be the same for all of the points. And it's good to do one, obviously, but if you always want to check it with a second, that way you can know that you're correct. So that is how we can find slope using both a graph and a table. There is, however, another way. And that way is using the slope formula. The slope is m. We're going to use the variable m to represent slope. So the slope m of a line passing through two points is the ratio of the difference in the y to the corresponding difference in the x. So that might sound a little bit confusing, but if you look at the model over here at the line, we have a point that's labeled x1, y1 to represent our first ordered pair, and another point that is x2, y2 that represents the second ordered pair. All we're going to do, our rise is our up and down, is represented by our change in y's. So we're going to subtract our y's and divide it by our x's. And again, it doesn't matter which you call your first and which you call your second. You could switch these up, as it says here. Uh, you just have to make sure you're consistent and keep it in the same order. Now this might make a little bit more sense as we actually try to solve some problems. So we're given A being 2, 2 and B being 5, 3. What I always do, whether I'm in the 8th grade, in high school, college, or even teaching, what I always do on slope problems is I assign one of my ordered pairs as x1, y1, and the other ordered pair as x2, y2. It doesn't matter if it's your first slope problem or your millionth slope problem. Setting up which ordered pair is x1, y1, and which ordered pair is x2, y2 will make every single slope problem easier to solve. So we're going to use our formula m equals y2 minus y1 and divide it by x2 minus x1. Now before we get more into this, I want to clear something up here. These twos and ones, this does not mean y squared or x squared. Again, it does not mean y squared or x squared. It's a way to describe the ordered pair. It's a way to describe the point. So what we're going to do now is say, all right, m is going to equal, substitute in. We have our y2, we're going to say is 3, minus our y1, we're going to say is 2, and we're going to divide that by our x2 comes next, which is 5, subtract our x1, which we're saying is 2, and now we just need to simplify. 3 minus 2 is 1, 5 minus 2 is 3, so the slope of this line is 1 third. If we move on to the next example, again, whether it's your second slope problem or your millionth and second, always label x1, y1, and x2, y2, since we're just going to call this one our first ordered pair and this one our second one. And again, you could call this one x2, y2, and this one x1, y1. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent with that being the first, that being the second, or the other way around. We can set up our formula here, m equals y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So our slope m is going to equal, well, y2 is negative 2 minus y1 is negative 4 divided by x2 is negative 3 minus x1 is negative 7. Now this is where our integer skills come in handy. 
And again, whether it's your first integer problem or your last, um, always keep change opposite when you're subtracting. It can really help you out. So we'll keep the negative 2, change the subtraction to addition, and the opposite of negative 4 is a positive 4. And divide that by keep the negative 3, change the subtraction to addition, and the opposite of negative 7 is a positive 7. That's much easier to look at, negative 2 plus 4 over negative 3 plus 7, than trying to figure out, okay, subtracting a negative, so I'm going backward, I'm going forward, I, I don't know. So if you just KCO, keep change opposite all your subtractions into additions, you can make calculating these much, much simpler. So now, negative 2 plus 4 is 2, negative 3 plus 7 is 4. And just like our first question, we can simplify this one very similarly by dividing by 2 on top and bottom to get our final answer of 1 half. Good luck.